Hello viewers, welcome to my channel and today's topic is the retropharyngeal abscess and uh, before starting this topic I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel and if you need more information about any disease, any medical condition and uh, then you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and the link uh, for the website is just below this video in the description area so if you need more information you can visit my website simply by clicking that link you know uh, and the subscribe button is also below this video and I come to the topic uh, like uh, what is a retropharyngeal abscess you know you know the retropharyngeal abscess uh, is a, a serious infection uh, deep in the neck you know and uh, generally located in the area behind the throat and in children it's usually starts in the lymph nodes in the throat you know and uh, this type of abscess is very rare and it typically occurs in children under the age of eight uh, though it can also affect older children and maybe adults as well you know it's not limited to the children only uh, but uh, mostly it happens uh, or it uh, uh, affects the children under the age of eight years you know and this infection may come and on quickly and uh, can lead to the serious complications and in severe in cases you know uh, it can lead to a death as well uh, the next thing what are the symptoms you know this is an unusual infection that can be very tricky or maybe very difficult for the physician to diagnose you know and the symptoms uh, after uh, retropharyngeal abscess include uh, a difficulty or maybe a noisy breathing you know uh, difficulty in swallowing food, uh, pain when you swallow, you know, uh, drawling, fever, which is a sign of infection, you know, a cough, another sign of infection, and severe throat pain, uh, stiffness that is very significant, you know, and uh, swelling on the neck, you know, the muscle spasm in the neck. So these are the signs and the symptoms, you know, and if you experience any of these symptoms or observe them in your child, you know. Uh, consult your doctor right away, you know, and uh, uh, this is a, a something that you need the immediate medical attention, you know, okay, and if you're having any difficulty breathing or swelling, uh, just call them and just the straight away, you know, or uh, consult your doctor if available, you know, and if doctor is not available, uh, call the emergency services. Uh, the next thing is what are the causes? Well, you know, in children, uh, the upper respiratory tract infections usually occur before the uh, onset of the retropharyngeal abscesses, you know. And uh, the example is like your child may first experience the middle ear or maybe sinus infection, you know. And in older children and the adults, uh, it typically occurs after some type of uh, uh, trauma to the area, you know, or any accidental damage, you know. And this may include like an injury, maybe any medical procedure, maybe dental work, or maybe accident, you know. And the different bacteria may cause your retropharyngeal uh, like uh, abscesses, you know. And it's common for more than one type of bacteria may be present, you know. And uh, uh, in children, the most common bacteria uh, in this infection is uh, Streptococcus and Staphylococcus, you know. And some other respiratory bacterial species may be involved, you know. And other infections like uh, HIV and maybe the tuberculosis may also cause this uh, uh, retropharyngeal abscesses you know and uh, some uh, scientists have uh, linked the rise in cases of the retropharyngeal abscesses uh, uh, to the recent like increase in the MRSA you know uh, which is the the antibiotic resistant uh, staph infection you know okay so uh, but there isn't any kind of uh, uh, evidence available so far you know the next thing is who is at risk well uh, it occurs most commonly in children uh, between the ages of uh, two and four years, you know. And uh, the young children are more uh, susceptible to this infection because they have the lymph nodes in the throat that can become infected, you know. And uh, as a young child, uh, as it matures, you know, uh, these lymph nodes begin to recede, you know. And the lymph nodes are typically much smaller by the time a child is eight years old. And uh, that's why I said in the beginning, you know, uh, it's uh, uh, the uh, if a child who is under the age of uh, under age of eight is more 
uh, likely to uh, get this type of this type of uh, uh, retropharyngeal abscesses you know and uh, it's also slightly more common in the males if compared to the female child you know and adults who have a weakened immune system or uh, with the chronic disease uh, are also at the increased risk you know for this infection and these may include like uh, uh, alcoholism maybe diabetes maybe cancer maybe aids you know and any other uh, uh, autoimmune disorders you know the your community is compromised you know immunity is compromised you know now uh, in order to make the diagnosis you know your doctor will ask you the, about the symptoms you know uh, and any immediate medical history you know and after like any infection any chest infection or any other type of infection you know and after performing the physical examinations uh, he may uh, order the imaging tests you know like ultrasound or maybe x-rays or maybe ct scan you know and during the physical examination your doctor will ask uh, i mean he will uh, see any kind of uh, inflammation or stiffness in the neck you know he will take your blood pressure your temperature and uh, i may listen your heart your chest to see if there is any sign of infection in and uh, in addition to the imaging test your doctor may also order the complete blood count you know or maybe the blood culture you know and these tests will help the doctor to determine the extent and the cause of the uh, infection you know and uh, it will also help to rule out uh, the possible causes for these symptoms and your doctor may consult with an ear and uh, nose doctor you know which is known as ENT doctors you know or any other specialist to assist uh, with your diagnosis and maybe the treatment options you know and uh, what's diagnosed and what are the treatment options well these infections are usually treated with uh, in the hospital you know and uh, if you or your child is having trouble in breathing your doctor may provide the oxygen you know and in severe situations uh, in like uh, intubation may be necessary you know and for this process your doctor will insert a tube into your windpipe you know uh, through your mouth or uh, nose to help you breathe more easily you know and more effectively you know and uh, this is the only necessary until you are able to resume breathing uh, on your own you know and then it will be removed you know and during this time your doctor will uh, also uh, treat the infection intravenously with the antibiotics uh, especially the because there are many bacteria like streptococcus streptococcus many of the bacteria you know so you need to be treated with the broad spectrum antibiotics you know and uh, the broad spectrum antibiotics work against uh, many different types of the bacteria simultaneously you know and your doctor will likely administer either uh, like uh, uh, ceftriaxone or maybe uh, uh, clindamycin you know which is broad spectrum antibiotic for this purpose you know it's very effective now because the swallowing is compromised uh, due to this abscess abscess you know uh, the intravenous fluids may also be a part of your treatment you know okay and uh, a surgery to uh, drain the abscesses especially if the airway is blocked you know uh, it may be necessary okay but again it depends on the severity and the location you know uh, if it's left on treated Uh, this infection can spread to other parts of the body and if the infection spreads to the blood stream it can result in septic shock and maybe organ failure and may lead to the death you know and the abscess may also block the your airways you know so which will lead to the respiratory distress you know maybe respiratory failure you know so other complications may include like pneumonia maybe blood clots in the like uh, jugular vein you know and uh, uh, like uh, uh, media uh, stenosis you know Uh, which is or the inflammation or the infection in the chest cavity outside of the lungs you know and uh, osteomyelitis uh, which is the bone infection you know so these are the complications uh, well outlook is generally is uh, fair you know and with the proper treatment your child can uh, have the full recovery you know and depending on the severity of the abscess you uh, may be on antibiotics for 2 to or maybe 3 weeks you know and it's important to watch the like uh, recurrence of any symptoms and uh, if symptoms uh, do reoccur you know or they come back you know uh, just uh, seek the medical attention uh, immediately you know don't delay uh, 
uh, and it's very important to uh, in decrease the risk of uh, uh, complications you know and uh, these abscesses uh, recurrence is about uh, 1 to 5 percent you know and the people with the uh, these type of the abscesses uh, are 40 to 50 percent more likely to die due to uh, abscess related complications you know and death is more prevalent in infected adults than in children you know? uh, thank you very much for watching this video uh, well, yeah, the question is that I was going to forget is about the prevention, you know, is it possible to prevent? Well, yeah, uh, well, you know, the immediate medical treatment uh, for any upper respiratory infection will help to prevent the development of uh, retropharyngeal abscesses, you know, and be sure to complete the full course of the antibiotics prescribed by your doctor. Uh, don't stop uh, once your symptoms improve, you know, mostly people do, you know, but don't do that. Complete the course okay and uh, only take the antibiotics when prescribed by the doctor and this can help to prevent the antibiotic resistance infections you know such as MRSA so don't uh, use uh, uh, the antibiotics without the doctor's advice you know and if your child your child has any trauma uh, to the area of infection like uh, in that case make sure that to follow all the treatment instructions you know and it's important to report any problems to your doctor and to attend the follow-up appointments you know, once you are recovered. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And please do not forget to like, subscribe, or share these videos to support this channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye.